You have reached Red Steel's awesome toy collector review. I'm your man, Red Steel, and today I have a good one for you guys because today I'll be reviewing Transformers Legacy Decepticon Motor Mask. Transformers Legacy Decepticon Motor Master. But before I get into the actual review, I just want to go over some of the stunning details on this packaging. Up front here, you this beautiful illustration of Motor Master in his truck mode. Then below that, you have the Transformer Legacy logo. Then up here in the corner, you have the Takar Tomy logo. And below that, you have the Transformers Generation logo. Then over here, you have the Hasbro logo. Then on the top of the box here, again you have the Transformer Legacy logo. Then over here a picture of the actual figure in his truck mode. Then on the side of the box here, you have this really cool illustration of Menasaur. Then on the other side of the box here, you have that spectacular montage of all the Decepticons from Legacy, starting with Megatron. And below him is Decepticon Drag Strip, Iguanas, Skywarp, and kickback. Then over here you have a picture of Cybertron, then again the Transformer Generations logo, and below all that you have the Transformer Legacy logo. Then on the back of the box here you have all of the figures features, such as Motor Master in his robot mode, Motor Master in his cab mode, Motor Master in his full truck mode, and Motor Master in his base mode. Then over here in the corner you see a picture of Menasaur, and Menasaur is a combiner with all the pieces of the Stundicons. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox Motor Master so you guys can see what he looks like fresh out of the factory. But before I do that, I just want to bring something up to you guys. I've watched a couple of my reviews and I've received some feedback that some portions of my review, my autofocus is turned on and it takes focus away from the actual object I'm reviewing. For instance, let me give you an example. When I talk about an accessory, I'll bring my hand into the foreground. Let's say I'm talking about a swappable head or hand. My camera's folk, uh, programmed to focus on that object. But when I pull my hand away, my camera should be refocusing on the actual object. But sometimes my camera gets confused and it'll, it'll, it will stay attached to an object in the foreground. So let's say I'm transforming a figure and my autofocus will be focused on this hand instead of the actual object. So I'm going to record this uh, review with the autofocus turned off and I'm going to review it. And if it works out, then that's what I'll do moving forward so you guys don't have to worry about autofocus. Um, reviews or there's certain parts of the object that you missed out on because it was out of focus. So I'm gonna work on that a little bit better and when I do bring something into the foreground I'll refocus on that but I'll return the focus back on onto the actual object manually. But getting into the unboxing now, if you guys are regulars here at Rad Steel's Awesome Toy Collector Review, you know I'm a little OCD and I like to open all my packaging from the right side, kind of keep everything uniform. And right here you have a piece of tape right here. So I got my trusty scissors and like I mentioned before, I'm going to refocus this. I'm going to go ahead and poke it a little bit. And I'm going to go run my nails across the, the tape. I'm going to go ahead and pull it. So I got to fold it over flap like that. And I'm going to go ahead and pull Motor Master off so you guys can see what it looks like straight out of the factory. And I know a lot of these people like, like watching these unboxings because sometimes when they repackage their figures, they don't remember how they came packaged and... You know, you have kind of like a Tetris with your figures trying to get them in the backs of the boxes because you don't want the figure poking out from the, the panels in the box and damaging the box. Inside the box, you have instructions, of course. And it looks like it's taped together in, in some different pieces. I don't know if I want to... Actually, it's one piece right here. It looks like it's folded over and held together by some tape. Right there, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe... Actually, no, I'm wrong. There's nothing in those pieces. Although I think it's just, you know, to avoid maybe being in a blister tray, they folded over these uh, pieces of cardboard to kind of hold Motor Master in the middle. It looks like Motor Master comes in his truck mode. Very simple. I'm not sure how he's being. He's not even being, he's not even uh, tie wrapped in, which I really, really did. Really, really cool. And I 
know, I've kind of researched Motormaster a little bit, and I, I, I've heard about issues with the wheels kind of flailing out and like that. But yeah, Motormaster is not being held by anything, really. It's, his packaging is very simple. Comes in his truck mode, and I don't see any surprises, so that's it. This is more, acts more like a, a simulated cardboard blister tray. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that off to the side. And this is how Motormaster comes right out of the box. Transformers Legacy Commander Class Decepticon Motormaster. Decepticon Motormaster was released on August 1st of 2022 with the suggested retail price of $89.99 and he is available at all major retailers. Decepticon Motormaster is a G1 inspired figure that converts into his truck mode in 23 steps. Motormaster's trailer also converts into a battle station in 23 steps. His accessories include his Energon Sword, his Energon Blaster, his trailer, and instructions. Motormaster can also combine with the other four Stunticons to form Menasaur. Motormaster stands approximately 13 inches and he is meant for fans ages 8 and up. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and convert Motormaster from his truck mode all the way to his robot mode. The first step of the transformation, you wanna take this trailer and remove it from the cab, and it pegs in right on the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that off to the side. The first step of the transformation, you wanna go take these panels and kinda of pop them up a little bit so they're untabbed. And you got a hinge joint right there and right there. You wanna go ahead and swing those open like that. Go ahead and do it to the other side. Go ahead and swing that open like that. And you have the second panel right here. I want to take that panel and kind of fold it in like that. I'm going to do it to the other side. Take that panel and kind of fold it in like that. So Motormaster should look like this so far. The next part of the transformation, I want you to take this cab, kind of split it open like that. So it looks like this. And on the top of the cab, you have the panel right there and right there. I want to go and flip those up like that. Because at the front of this panel, you have a tab right there. And below the windshield, you have a porthole. I'm going to take that panel and kind of peg it right into that porthole. So I'm going to do it to the other side, take this panel right here, kind of pop it up and peg it right under the windshield like that. The next step of the transformation, they want you to take this piece, the whole cab piece right here, and you get this little thigh piece right here. You kind of want to straighten it out like that because it becomes Mortar Master's leg. I'm going to do that to the other side, kind of bring that out like that. So he should look like this so far. Then at the bottom of the cab, right here, you got a couple wheels and you got a couple grooves right there. You want to push those wheels right into that groove like that. I'm going to do it to the other side. So you got to push that in. Because when you flip it back over again, you have the front grill right here of the truck mode. What you want to do is you want to take that, you kind of want to angle it in like that. And you can take this piece and rotate it all the way around so you bring out Motormaster's feet. Which is really cool detail because it looks like a little mini cab right there. Kind of very reminiscent of the Generation 1 toy and cartoon model. Go and do that to the other side, take this piece, kind of rotate it all the way around and bring it in like that. There's the next step of the transformation. What you want to do, you want to turn this whole figure all the way around. And you got these panels that, that are on the side right here. You want to take this panel right here, the Subcon symbol, you want to flip it in to the other panel right here. Go ahead and do it to the other side, take that panel with the Subticon symbol, kind of flip it in like that. Because now there's some more detail. You got a couple tabs right there and right there. You have a porthole right at the back of the leg. So I take these panels and plug that uh, peg right into that porthole like that, kind of close off the back of the leg, like this. Then also for the next step of the transformation, what they want you to go ahead and do, they want you to go ahead and take this panel, and there's a peg right there, and there's a porthole right there. They want you to kind of twist it in, and peg it in like that. Go and do it to the other side. Take this panel with this little peg right here. They want you to go ahead and just bring it right down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You peg that right into place. The next step of the transformation, they want you to bring this whole assembly and bring it down to kind of make most Motormaster's legs. Like that and like that. So, so far, you have the bottom part of Motormaster already done. The next step of the transformation, what they want you to go ahead and do, they want you to go ahead and kind of untab the arms from this whole back trailer hitch part at the back of Motormaster's truck. Kind of untab them. 
So what they want you to do next is take this whole wheel assembly and bring it all the way down like that. Then the next thing they want you to do, they want you to kind of fold it in like that. Then the next step of the transformation, you got these shoulder joints right here. There's a hinge right there and right there. They want you to go ahead and bring that all down like that. And just peg it right into place. Because you got a little peg right there, you got a little porthole right there. You just want to go ahead and just swing it around. Just peg it right into place and you hear a very satisfying click. The next step of the transformation, what they want you to go ahead and do, they want you to take this whole piece right here and swing it all the way around to his back. So it kind of forms his backpack. And just kind of like peg it right into place, right back here. The next step of the transformation, what they want you to go ahead and do, they want you to go ahead and take the fist and just panel right in the front, or actually the panel in the back, I'm sorry. And you go ahead and you flip this fist right out like that. I'm going to do it to the other side. I'm going to take this panel in the back, open it up, it reveals the fist. Flip that fist out, and now you have both the Motor Master's fists. And now you go ahead and just bring the arms down, and now you have Motor Master and his complete robot mode. Now I'm going to go ahead and convert Motor Master's trailer into its battle station. In the first step of the transformation, you have this kickstand. You want to go ahead and push this up. Because the next step you're going to want to do is you want to go ahead and split this trailer in the front. This front piece with Menasaur's chest piece hosts Motor Master's sword. It's held on by a peg, so you're going to unpeg it. You got that porthole right in the middle of the sword right there. Oh, go ahead and put that off to the side. There's a peg right there, and that's how it gets stored. I'm going to take this component and put that off to the side. The next part of the trailer, you want to split apart the top and the bottom part right here. I'm going to go ahead and put those off to the side for now. Now I'll go ahead and convert each component from Motor Master's trailer. The first component I'm going to go ahead and convert is this front piece right here that has what appears to be Menacer's chest piece. The first of the transformation, you get this great piece right here. And at the top of that great piece, you have a hinge right here. They want you to go ahead and flip this piece up like that. So it looks like that. Next step, you have a hinge here. And a hinge here. You want to go ahead. You want to hold these side panels in. You want to flip that up like that. Go ahead and do it to the other side. Go ahead and flip that panel up like that. See, because he looks like this so far. Then again, you have another hinge right here. Another hinge right here. Then want you go ahead and flip that panel down. Do that to the other side. And it frees up this chest piece. You want to go and take this chest piece and put it off to the side. Then on the inside of this piece, you'll notice that there's a lot of pegs. A lot of portholes, and they all line up and match up. You want to go ahead and fold this piece all the way up like that. And they all should just peg right into place like that. Now you have this first component of his battle station converted. Next component of Motor Master's trailer I'm going to go ahead and convert is this top piece right here. And this is a fairly simple step. You got this uh, piece right here and it splits into three pieces. The piece that you want is this one right here. I'm going to put these other two pieces off to the side. This piece right here actually becomes Motor Master's Energon Blaster. You got this purple piece right here. There's a hinge right here in the front. You want to go and flip that out. Now you have Motor Master's Energon Blaster. Next, you're going to want to grab Motor Master's bottom half of his uh, trailer. And this step's fairly simple too. All you're going to want to do is split this apart. So you have these two components like that. Next, you want to grab that menace or chest piece. You take this piece and you just turn it over like this. At the center of this part, you have this purple panel right here, and at the top right here, you have this hinge joint. Just flip this panel up like that. Then you turn the part over, and you have these two pieces like that. And you're done a ratchet joint, so you gotta kind of push it up like that. I'm gonna do it to the other side. Take this piece, and push it up like that. You want to take this piece and turn it all the way around. You get this chest plate again. You want to swing this chest plate all the way up like that. Now you're going to grab the bottom halves of Motor Master's trailer that you split off earlier on. In the middle of each one of these pieces, you got a hinge right there. You want to go ahead and bend that at the hinge. I'm going to do that to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and grab this bottom part right here and go ahead and just bend it right at that hinge. I'm going to put those down for one second because I'm going to bring back this piece right here. 
And when you flip this piece around, at the very top here, you got a couple portholes right there and right there. What you're going to want to do is grab these pieces and there's a peg on each side. One right there and one right there. You want to plug those right into those portholes. And what you're going to do on the other side is go ahead and that peg right into that port. So it should look like this. Next, you're going to grab both of Motormaster's top halves of this trailer. And there's a panel right here on the side of the purple stripe. It's a hinge on the very back of it. You want to flip this panel so it comes all the way out like that, exposing a purple foot piece, which is actually Menacer's foot piece. You want to go and flip that out also, like that. I'm going to do it to the other side. Grab this leg piece right here. Get this hinge right here. So flip it all the way out like that. Then you want to take this purple piece and you want to flip that all the way out like that. So, so far you should have this going on. Next, you want to go ahead and grab this piece right here that you just combined earlier on. On each side here, you have a little porthole right there and right there. You want to grab these leg pieces that you just converted over. You want to make sure that this peg is on the outside like that. I'm going to grab the other one. The peg's on the outside because what you're going to want to do is peg it right into these pieces like that. Go ahead and do it to the other side. Just go ahead and peg that right them like that. So, so far you have this going. Now you want to go ahead and grab that Energon Blaster. And at the front of the Energon Blaster, you have two white handles. On each side right here, you have a hinge right there and a hinge right there. You want to take these white handles and kind of swing them out like that. Go ahead and do it to the other side. You're going to swing that handle out like that. The next thing you want to do is grab this piece right here, which looks like a stand. At the top of the stand, you have a white peg right there. Bottom of the Energon Blaster, you have a porthole right there. You just plug that Energon Blaster right into that white peg like that. Then the next step, you have this purple panel right here in the back of the Energon Blaster. You just slightly flip that up like that. It should lock into place. And now you have this piece completely converted. Now I've brought back all the components I've already constructed. And the last piece I need to put onto this battle station is this piece right here. And on the back of this piece, on the bottom, you have a couple pegs right there and right there. Over here on this platform, you have a couple portholes right there and right there. All you have to do is plug that right in. And now you have his battle station completely assembled. Now that Motor Master's battle is such a completely assembled, I just want to go over some of its play features. And there's one major play feature, and that's this blaster up here. It's Energon Blaster. It's kind of on a turret right here. Really cool, and it has handles that stick out. What you can do is you can arm Motor Master on this battle station by pegging each one of his hands into the handles, like this. I'm going to do it to the other side. Let's bring Motor Master's hands in. And now you have Motormaster manning his battle station. Pretty cool. Looks really cool. It's a cool play feature. I mean, it's not my play feature of choice, but it's great to have options. And most likely, I'll either display Motormaster in his robot mode, or I'll have it completely assembled in Menasaur once I get the other stunt icons. Now that Motormaster in his vehicle mode and on my display table, I just want to go over some of his play features and accessories. And I've been on the edge of my seat on who they're going to announce as their commander class figure. And then I'll start with the War for Cybertron trilogy when they brought out Siege. When they announced Jetfire, and he far exceeded my expectations. And the same thing with Skylings. When they brought out Skylings, he exceeded my expectations. And finally with Kingdom, I mean Rodimus Prime. They brought out Rodimus Prime and he just blew my mind. So I was very excited to discover who they're going to bring out as the legacy commander class figure and I was a little let down because I couldn't really picture what, what direction they could have gone with Motormaster. And you know when, once I have him on hand I'm kind of glad with the direction they went because if you remember Motormaster from Combiner Wars they only brought out his, his cap in the U.S. trailer because around that time there was a lot of the figures like Optimus Prime and Motormaster namely they weren't releasing trailers because of cost issues or whatnot. So Motormaster's cab was all we had, and he, that was what transformed into Motormaster, and also the centerpiece for Menasaur, and it all worked, and I kind of like that. 
take a Motormaster, so it kind of did away with the cab. But the cab, to me, was was a very instrumental part of, of Motormaster. And unfortunately, when you, if you owned a Generation 1 toy, the cab and the trailer are one piece. And the cab actually becomes Motormaster's feet, which you saw kind of was incorporated in the transformation into his robot mode. Well, the issue that I have with that is Motormaster and Optimus Prime skill, they skill all right in robot mode when it comes to the Generation 1 toy. It was just that in the truck mode, he was heavily being pushed as Optimus Prime's new rival on the road. But with the actual Generation 1 toy, Motormaster was much smaller than Optimus Prime. And, and there's a scene from Generation 1 that kind of like sticks to my head over time because that was, that was what sold me on Motormaster. It was part where Motormaster's first confrontation with Optimus Prime, he ramps Optimus Prime and kind of defeats him. And let me show you a clip of that real quick. I've got to stop them somehow. Now, Optimus Prime, we'll see who's king of the road. And this is part of the reason why I made it a mission as a kid to get all of this stuff to come. So I saved up all my money, and I actually, Menacer was only combiner that I completed as a child. I mean, as an adult, I own them all now. But Motormaster, that, that scene where Motormaster overtook Optimus Prime, which is very rare because Optimus Prime was, was perfect. I mean, he won all the time. And to have a new character like Motormaster overpower him that way, that's why I needed to get this Motormaster. But if you own the actual toy, you'll, you'll know that the scales were so way off and you couldn't really reenact that up until now because I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Kingdom Earthrise Optimus Prime. I mean, Optimus Prime, as you can see in the side-by-side -side comparison, is much smaller than Motormaster. But still, the scale is significant because, I mean, the wheels are almost the same size. So if you really want to reenact that scene where Motormaster rams inside of Optimus Prime, Makes much more sense than it did in Generation 1. Because, I mean, it makes more so sense now because Motormaster is larger than Optimus Prime. I'm going to take Optimus Prime and put him off to the side. Because I want to go ahead and talk about Motormaster. And I want to talk about Motormaster's trailer first because, you know, um, his trailer accomplishes a lot. I mean, it acts as three different aspects of, of Menasaur, Motormaster, and a battle station. I mean, this is a three for one deal, so there's a lot of gimmicks incorporated into this trailer. So there's a lot of sacrifices that were made too. Like right now, you can see Mo uh, Menasaur's chest piece right here and the shoulder piece right here. I mean, if I was an engineer, I would have designed maybe a shield that would cap that off because I mean, as you saw from the battle station mode, and I'm not really gonna um, go over Menasaur too much in this review because I'm gonna wait till I collect all the pieces of, of Menasaur before I do a full review of Menasaur because I want to, as of right now, I only own Drag Strip and Wild Rider is being released but ha hasn't been cited in California yet. And you also have Breakdown and Dead End that, that are going to be future releases in later waves. So I'm going to go ahead and just wait till I complete Menasaur before I do a full on review of Menasaur. But a lot of engineering was incorporated in this trailer to kind of like house a lot of Menasaur's parts. I mean, Menasaur is packed in this trailer and all you have to do really is attach the other Stunticons to these pieces to complete Menasaur. And as you can see, there's a chest piece right here, shoulder pieces right here. And Man Menasaur's, or Motor Master's trailer also functions as a battle station. It comes apart, and as you saw during earlier parts of this review, this, this, a lot of engineering was incorporated to, to make a little battle station. And so, with all this engineering put into this trailer, it functions as different things, there's a lot of sacrifices that were made. Like you see a lot of panels. And right here you have a purple piece that flips out. And if you, I'm sure if you color this piece silver, it'll affect other aspects of, you know, his transformation, such as Metasaur or the Battle Station. And they didn't fully complete the purple stripe right here because I'm sure that's that's being incorporated for other uses here. As the same thing for this back door right here. You see some molded detail and door detail here. But yeah, this purple piece and this white piece right here, which functions as different aspects of his transformation, which are very important, but they didn't really see a need to paint this silver because that would affect that part of the transformation. But other than that, this trailer is very hefty. 
has a little stand right here that comes out, and you see the little trailer hitch right here. And with Motormaster now, and I think this is really cool, was they, what they did was they utilized the engineering from both Combiner Wars, where only the cab transformed into the robot, and Generation 1, where they're able to reincorporate the, tra the trailer, you know, where it plays a big in instrumental part in this transformation, where Menasaur, you know, because personally, you know, with all the sacrifices made, I'm not going to display Motormaster in this truck, this, you know, and I don't think a lot of collectors are either. I'm either going to display my Motormaster in this robot mode, and then once I complete all the pieces of Menasaur, I'm going to primarily display him as Menasaur. So, you know, a lot of these faults of the separation in the panels and different colored panels, it's very forgivable with what they're trying to accomplish with this mode. I'm going to go and put this trailer off to the side because I want to talk about his cab because this cab to me is the main event because it, it's just a great, great figure. I mean, if you look at the windows, they, they have that purple detail from the actual Generation 1 toy here. And in the cartoon series, you also have the purple windows. You have the Septicon insignia here, and it's the molded detail. You see a lot of the rivets from the, pa the metal panels here. You see the... Right here, you have the gunmetal paint right here for the fender and uh, the grill. And you have wheel detail, where the wheel actually, actually functions as rolling wheels. Uh, not a lot of hollow detail. So if you turn a motor master over, you can't really tell, you can't see a lot of the robot parts. I mean, if you look really, really hard, you can't see motor master's head peeking right here. And you can also see his chest right here. But if you're done the wiser, you wouldn't recognize this as motor master's chest. No, but I think this, this cab mode is very tight. Very cool, but I see really very little flaws other than some of this detail here, but I'm not too picky. And like I mentioned earlier on, if I cho chose to display Motor Master, it's either going to be in his robot mode or in his menace mode. Now that Motor Master in his robot mode and on my display table, I once again want to go over some of his play features and accessories, first by talking about his Energon Blast. And to me, this Energon Blaster does not work with Motor Master while he's in his robot mode. I mean, it worked great in the battle station mode, and it might work well with Menasaur because that pedestal that this blaster stands on while it's in battle station mode is not incorporated in Menasaur's transformation. So you might be able to arm Menasaur or keep this, this blaster on that pedestal next to Menasaur once you complete Menasaur. But it doesn't work with Motor Master because, I mean, you gotta peg it in one of the, each of one of these handles. I don't wanna do it with the outside handle. Number two, this blaster is very heavy and bulky. So once you put it in Motor Master's hand, it springs his arm all the way down. There's no way that Mo Motor Master could hold this blaster off. So I'm gonna take this blaster and put it off to the side because I wanna bring in the accessory that actually does work. That is, that is his Energon sword. And this Energon sword looks just like the sword that came with the Generation 1 toy. The only difference is that one was back metal where it was completely silver. And I really do enjoy the choice they made where they made the hilt black here and the, the blade gunmetal silver because it really popped with Motor Master's color scheme. Put in his hand, and if I was to display Motor Master in his robot mode, I would do it with the sword. And only one time that I remember seeing the sword featured in the cartoon series was when Vector Sigma gave Motor Master life. He was holding the sword, but I think that was the one and only time I remember the sword featured in the cartoon series. But I think it's really, really cool that they included the sword anyways. I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side. So I want to go ahead and talk about this engineering feat behind Motor Master and how they're able to incorporate and bring back the trailer because Generation 1 toy he was, he was the actual truck and trailer that transformed into the robot. The feet became the, the feet were the cab, and the rest of the body was a trailer, and it's all folded and, and worked. And the problem with that is, you know, this toy was marketed more to become a rival of Optimus Prime on the road, where he wanted to become the new king of the road. And I mean that worked in robot mode, because the robot mode for the toy actually scaled with the robot mode for the Generation 1 Optimus Prime, much like it does for the Kingdom, Earthrise, Optimus Prime, and Legacy Optimus Prime, they scale great together. He's a little bit taller, but that's how he was in a cartoon series. But the problem came when, when you converted or transformed the Generation 1 toy, you folded him up, the feet became the cab, and it was a very small truck. Optimus Prime, the robot itself, was just the cab. Then you brought in the trailer, and the trailer was ginormous. So you couldn't really have a rival, or Motor Master wasn't a great rival when it came to the Generation 1 toy because he was much smaller. 
and they corrected that with Combiner Wars, because Combiner Wars, you know, they did away with a lot of the trailers. Both Optimus Prime and Motor Master didn't come with trailers, but the cab transformed, and I thought that Motor Master was solid. He was great. To me, he, was, he became the new definitive version of Motor Master. I mean, where could they go from there, in my mind? I mean, a, a lot of the Combiner War figures, I, I enjoy. I mean, Menasaur had its, had its flaws, but to me, I was just happy to have Menasaur because, you know, Menasaur to me was my combiner of choice because all of his neighborhood kids picked one combiner and I picked Menasaur. My first uh, Stunticon was actually Dead End and my second was Motormaster. I Motormaster was one of those things where I saved my allowance for weeks. Had my dad take me down to Sears and yes, at one point in time, Sears did sell toys. And I don't even know if Sears is still around or people even know what Sears is, but Sears was a department store that was, was where I got my Transformers from in the beginning. But um, Motor, Motor Master, then I eventually got the other pieces of Menasaur from birthdays and I think I saved my allowance for Wild Rider. A drag strip, I think I did too, and and dead uh, breakdown ended up being a birthday gift. So I, I did complete my Menasaur, and it was only one and only combiner that I completed as a kid, and I still own I still own Dead End. I think I own all of them actually, all my original Stunticons. I never really had to update any of my Stunticons. I kept them in good shape, but I still own that very same Menasaur to this very day, and I think I have Motor Master's box still. So if I do. Eventually get back to the Midwest. I'll, I'll bust out all that out of storage and I'll, I'll review all those toys. But Motor Master now, this Motor Master for Legacy, is this my definitive Motor Master. I mean, he, in a robot mode, he's very faithful to the animated model from the Generation 1 cartoon series. And his transformation works too. I mean, the, as you saw from the truck mode, the truck looks just like it did from the cartoon series and even the Generation 1 toy. I mean, this is a great figure, overall figure. I mean, the, the way they incorporated everything from the trailer transformation to the cab transformation. I mean, they took the, the best parts of both figures and put it all in the one. And on top of that, just made it look just like he did in the cartoon series, which a lot, a lot of fans want to see. They want a cartoon accurate figure. And this is, this is it. I, I don't know where they can go from this figure. Now, I guarantee you maybe years down the road when they bring out the next Motor Master, they figured it out, and I'll be I'll be eating crow when that figure comes out. But up until then, this is Motor Master for me. But if you guys found any of the information in this review valuable, please like and share this video. Also, if you really enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel. And while you're there, click the bell to be notified of any future videos. I want to thank you guys for watching Red Steel's Us Toy Collector Review. I'll check you guys out next time.